anyone? Who is it? Who is it? Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga, correct, about five rows back there. For those of you who possibly aren't quite as up on the Lady Gaga as that lady is, let me run you through a few Lady Gaga facts. Her real name is Stephanie Joanne Angelina Germanotta. Now that she's a pop princess, she in fact started as a piano player at the age of four and went to one of the most prestigious um, musical schools of art in New York. 23 million albums, 64 million singles. She has over 28 million followers on Twitter. No, not just for singing very catchy pop tunes, but also getting around in dresses made entirely of meat. And of course, sometimes she just wants a bit of time to herself, wants to retreat from the glare of the media, so she tends to live in an egg during those periods. Turns out, Carl, you are also a little birdie told me, you're a bit of a fan of Lady Gaga. Uh, <coughs> she's a fan of me. We went, my family and I, we all went to see her perform at the stadium. Uh, we went, the whole family, we were down near the front, we were dancing, and she is a big fan of mine. She picked me out of the whole audience because of my fabulous dancing style. No offence, Carl. If there's 15, 20,000 people dancing, she's probably just saying a really nice, hi, I love you all. She's probably not really picking out your dancing style. I can back this up with an article in a journal of record, the Sydney Morning Herald, Friday, July the 13th. And during the show, at the very beginning, she said, hey, yellow pants, you're fabulous. And at the end of the show, after I'd been dancing all the way through, she said, you've been killing it all night. And there was a wink in that as well. I presume, are they the actual yellow pants? Unwashed, still wear them all the time. <laughs> It doesn't surprise me that in a room of 18,000 people, Lady Gaga would spot you dancing. It's not because of the yellow pants, it's because, Carl, I've actually seen you dancing. Watch the last couple of seconds of this classic. This is a bit of alcohol dehydrogenase. Everyone has some lurking in their bodies, and it's great to take to parties. Hi! Its main job is to break down the alcohol you drink. But there's a catch. Your body makes only this much at one time. That's why mm. space your drinks, mm. unlike this bloke, and drink water. You'll feel heaps better for it. So think before you drink. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Give him a round of applause, the ever dancing, ever singing Dr. Carl. I think what we might do now, Carl, it might be time for a bit of an experiment. Let's have everyone in the audience, you've been sitting there very politely for about half an hour, stand up, please. Everyone in the room, stand up. What I'm going to get you to do is, on the count of three, just relax and take your seats. Carl will give us an example. As you relax and take your seat, Dr. Carl, I want you, as you sit down, in the act of sitting down, to fold your legs. OK? So on the count of three, one, two, three, sit down, and as you do, Fold your legs and hold it there in the position that you've naturally found comfortable. Now, even in the act of leg crossing, you've had to make a decision. You might, like me, have your right leg on top of your left leg, or you might, like Carl, have your left leg in the dominant position. Put your hand up if, like Carl, you've put your left leg dominant. Ah, uh, you're okay. my new best friends forever. Put your hands down. Put your hand up if you were right leg dominant. I've got so many more friends than you. <laughs> and Carl and I are not surprised to know that because we happen to know that 62% of the population are right leg crosses. Only 26% of the population are left leg crosses. Strictly, 12% of the population have no preference or are indifferent. They're the people who sat down and went, I've got so many options. How did we learn about people's tendency for leg crossing? Adam, from the font of all knowledge, peer-reviewed literature, an article called Leg Crossing, Incidence and Inheritance, surprisingly, in the journal Throat. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's really important when you do cutting-edge science like this to have a degree of rigour about your work. People might, in years to come, want to copy or replicate, see if these results still hold across the age, across different cultures. It's crucial that you have definitions that are precise enough that people who follow on will know exactly what you did. Look at this classic example of a scientific definition. Leg crossing refers to the preferential tendency for individuals to sit with one leg crossed over the other. 
Nobel Prize winning stuff, isn't it? OK, <laughs> let's do another experiment, Dr Carl. I'm going to get everyone now to stand up again. Shake your hands out, relax your arms, and put your hands out like that, pointing your fingers to the front of the room. Fold your hands back like that. Fold your arms over and interlock your fingers. You're doing well so far. We're now going to fold these back up here. This is the tricky bit. Concentrate here. Point your index fingers up. Don't uncross them. Just fold them like that. You should be able to put your index fingers on the outside of your nose. And on the count of three, you're going to unwrap your arms without moving the nails off the side of the nose. One, two, three. There you go. Unwrap your fingers. OK, not everyone managed to do that. Sit down if that worked for you. If it didn't, remain standing. Remain standing if you struggle with that. We'll do it again. <laughs> Arms out. Turn them down. Fold them over. Interlock. Bring it back. Stay, don't uncross the fingers. Keep them there. Keep them there. One, two, three. Unlock the arms. <laughs> don't worry if you're struggling. The current Nobel Prize for Physics <laughs> winner is also <laughs> struggling. This is great, this one. If you're struggling to do this, what's happening is when you fold your arms, you've got a choice. You could fold left arm dominant or right arm dominant. And when you interlock your hands, you might be right thumb dominant or left thumb dominant. But by flicking over like that, we've created a situation where a lot of you will go into the locked position. So if you've struggled, let's do it one more time. Arms out, flip, cross your arms and interlock now. Just stop for a second. You've gone for the comfortable position. Shuffle down one finger to the uncomfortable position. Where it feels wrong. Do what it did, where you didn't naturally go. Bring it up, and you should now find that that unwraps perfectly. <laughs> there you go. It's a great trick to use at Christmas or there are birthday about, There are about 2% of you who are still stuck. I can't help you, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs>